Hey guys, what's going on? Ditesh here. Welcome back to the channel. So it's morning and I just recorded my reaction for the RTX 50 series uh, uh, launch uh, CES 2025. Jensen Huang on stage announced the RTX 50 series for desktops as well as laptops and I have a lot of thoughts about it. So let's not waste time and just get straight to what products were announced. So Nvidia announced the RTX 5090, 80, 70 Ti and 70. No scene of RTX 5060 for both desktops as well as laptops and obviously no 5050. So those things will come later down the road, maybe two to three months later. But here are the RTX 50 series uh, lineup. $2,000 for the RTX 5090 with 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 and a, I don't know, 700 plus millimeter square die. Uh, so the pricing isn't outrageous, believe it or not. I mean, we were expecting the RTX 5090 to be what, $2,500 or more, but it's 2000 US dollars and that's a huge like I mean in terms of specifications the RTX 5090 is massively improved over the 4090 so it's actually pretty surprising to see the 90 at 1000 US dollars and so is the rest of the lineup as well you can check it out the 5080 is 999 so we know the 4080 was super overpriced at 1200 US dollars later Nvidia collected the price to uh what it was thousand US dollars 4080 super and here we have the 5080 at the same 2000 US dollar price and I'm pretty sure the 5080 is going to be on par with the 4090 in terms of actual performance and like maybe like 5% lower in terms of rasterization but like 10% faster in the ray tracing okay but so overall we are getting 4090 performance at thousand US dollars which is a pretty good deal coming from Nvidia because Nvidia has zero competition in this price range zero competition although I must say Nvidia has not revealed anything about the rasterization performance or the ray tracing performance nothing they like if you have watched the live stream Nvidia only talked about AI AI and AI and implications and advantages of AI did not mention a single thing about the rasterization performance improvements or the rate even the rate tracing improvements were not talked about if i like if I, I saw the whole stream i did not see anything about the rate tracing improvements so it's all it was all about how ai would be used for rendering you know uh, with the rtx 50 series i'll come to that a bit later but you can see the rtx 5070 ti you know it's going to have 16 gigabytes of vram which is a improvement over the 4070 ti which initially came with 12 gigabytes of vram and the 4070 ti also came at 800 us dollars so this is 749 with uh 16 gigabytes of vram so again not outrageous pricing i mean nvidia has like kind of made us expect expect these types of pricing but i mean it is what it is 749 for 16 gigabytes of vram 5070 ti most likely will perform uh on par with an rtx 4080 so 4080 was thousand us dollars or twelve hundred dollars and now we are getting the same performance as 749 i mean that's what i can expect in terms of performance improvements okay and the 5070 again the 4070 was 600 us dollars 12 gigabytes of vram at least now you know it's a little more uh you know acceptable at 549 12 gigabytes of vram still but it is what it is uh so overall we did not see a price bump instead we saw a price decrease i guess nvidia learned the lesson with 40 series that they can't just charge whatever they wish and the 5090 is not outrageously priced that's my opinion it's like it's kind of it's it's pretty reasonable in my opinion like 2000 us dollars for a 32 gigabyte gddr7 monster of a gpu so yep uh something really shocking that was stated by nvidia was this check this out guys and now for 1500 dollars and 99 1599 you get to upgrade that and turbocharge the living daylights out of it. Well, now with the Blackwell family, RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. I mean, that's insane. I, there is, that, that is not a, like, I don't have a hint of doubt that Nvidia claiming the 5070 has the same performance as 4090. I don't have a hint of doubt that it is with some kind of DLSS or some exclusive feature that is enabled with the 5070 and that is not available with the 49 as i'll explain later it is with some kind of dlss for sure okay so nvidia claims the 5070 is as powerful as a 4090 which is crazy also later on they unveil the 5070 laptop and also says that it has the same performance of 4090 as at half the power so obviously it's just it's it's not the same guys it's not the same it's obviously it's not the same 
All right, guys, so I was editing this video and I was doing some research in the background to kind of find what kind of actual rasterization performance does the RTX 50 series bring about over the RTX 40 series. And it was really difficult to find this information. It was really hidden, but Nvidia posted a blog after some time and uh, it has a lot more information. Now, you have to be careful with these graphs because all of these games, if you look at the fine print over here, except, uh, you know, Plague Tale Requiem, all the other games are using DLSS 4, okay? Only Plague Tale Requiem is limited to DLSS 3. So only Plague Tale Requiem is what you can actually utilize as a comparison point, okay? And uh, a Plague Tale Requiem is actually a very GPU heavy game. So this is a good game to kind of judge the performance difference. Uh, I mean, it is it is it is just one game. It's not going to be, uh, you know, the same thing for other games. It's some may be more, some may be less, but let's just look at this one game, you know? So this is the 5090 versus the 4090. And to my naked eye, it's looking like around, a, you know, a 40% improvement over the uh, 4090, you know? That's what it's looking like to me. Moving on to the RTX 5080, and the difference is much lesser, around 30%, I guess. That's what looks like to me, to my naked eye. And uh, I mean, yeah, the 5080 is not going to be as fast as the 4090 by the looks of it. It's probably going to be around 5%, 5 to 8% 5 to slower than the 4090, which is not bad uh, based on the 5080's price, honestly. Okay, uh, moving on to the 5070 Ti, we have another bigger improvement. So again, it's around a 40% improvement. That's what it looks like to my naked eye. And uh, that's good because the 5070 Ti is also $50 cheaper than the 4070 Ti and it comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Moving on to the 5070, again, we have a reasonable difference. Just under 40% is what it looks like to me. Uh, 5070 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the 4070 also had 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So the VRAM is on bringing a difference over here, 1440p max settings. So yeah. So this was the one game that we could compare between all the GPUs. Be careful, don't look at other, other games because these are all with the uh, DLSS 4 multi-frame generation. It's not comparable, but yeah, the Plague Tale Requiem is giving us a kind of like a glimpse into the performance differences. So expect around 20, I would say 20, 25% difference between the GPUs, uh, you know, corresponding GPUs. So that's it. And they also unveiled the RTX uh, uh, laptop series. So you can see this is the laptop series with the RTX 5090. So the 5090 is supposed to have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. The 5080 is supposed to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. The 5070 Ti is supposed to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And the 5070 is still stuck at 8 gigabytes of VRAM since the GTX 1070. It's ridiculous. Anyways, the prices are not egregious. Like if you remember the RTX 4070 uh, laptops started at 2000 US dollars. There were very few laptops at the 1700 US dollar price range and a, and a couple of very basic laptops at, at 1500 US dollar price. I remember when 4070 launched. So here, at least in this case, the 5070 will start at 1300 US dollars. So that's a lower starting price, at least if I remember correctly. Okay, still eight gigabytes of VRAM. Again, it will depend how DLSS 4 turns out to be. I'll talk about DLSS 4 in just a minute. Okay, so 1300 US dollars for the RTX 5070. So in India, you can multiply that by 100. So when you convert from US dollars to India, Indian rupees, you have to multiply by 100 instead of, you know, 82 or 85, whatever. So one like 30,000 rupees for the 5070, uh, one like 60,000 for the 5070 Ti, which is not bad, 12 gigabytes of VRAM. If you remember, to get 12 gigabytes of VRAM in a latest generation RTX product, we have to spend 2,500 US dollars around like that, uh, which is basically 2 lakh 50,000 rupees. We can get in India for around 2 lakh 44,000 rupees or so, the 4080 for 12 gigabytes of VRAM. But here you can see the 5070 Ti is starting at 1599. So that's around 1 lakh 60,000, 1 lakh 70,000 rupees. That's what's going to be like in India, at least for Asus laptops. That's the conversion rate. You multiply by 100. And 5080 is supposed to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the starting price again, 2200 US dollars. So like 2 lakh 20,000 rupees. So that's, that's actually good. 5090 is pretty much beyond uh, most people's budget. It doesn't make sense to spend, you know, almost 3000 US dollars on a laptop. It doesn't make sense to me. But you know, the 5070 Ti is looking pretty cool at this price. I mean, the 5070 is again, something I don't recommend, 1300 US dollars for an eight gigabyte GPU. You know, the VRAM capacity is, is what's, you know, killing me right now. The 5070 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. The GTX 1070 had eight gigabytes of VRAM and we are still stuck at eight gigabyte VRAM on the 70 series uh, mobile parts. So 
1300 US dollars is just too much for 8 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas 1600 dollars is kind of acceptable for 12 gigabytes of VRAM on a laptop. They were talking about DLSS 4 in this section, let me just show you. So this is the section that they are talking about the DLSS 4 and uh, like when they were showing me this thing, I automatically, this is what clicked in my mind. Like this is a way to reduce the VRAM capacity, like VRAM usage. NVIDIA GPUs, you know, what's the biggest problem? It's the VRAM capacity. They are pretty stringent regarding the VRAM. And so uh, this is the, uh, you know, solution. DLSS 4, neural rendering and whatnot. So DLSS 4 is like, uh, it has a bunch of stuff. It's not just, uh, you can see over here, right? DLSS 4. So DLSS 4 is not just some kind of upscaling or frame generation. It's a bunch of stuff. It's got upscaling. It's got multi-frame generation, okay? And it's also got like uh, some kind of neural rendering. So I don't know what that is. So you can see RTX neural material. It shows that it's better quality, but uses less VRAM. So I don't know how that works, how it will be in real life, where there'll be, you know, artifacts and whatnot. Uh, that is up to, you know, user testing. So here you go. So this is the DLSS 4 features and what features are going to come to other other generations. So you can see the RTX 20 series and 30 series, they're going to have the same features. So we're going to have DLA. Okay. Everything is apparently enhanced. The entire DLSS stack has been enhanced according to NVIDIA. So we got enhanced DLA, we got enhanced DLSS, we got enhanced, you know, DLSS ray reconstruction. Okay, we got enhanced DLSS frame generation. So apparently DLSS frame generation is going to have better performance. So typically they promise, you know, 2x improvement, but we don't really see two times the frames generated. Okay, and also reduce memory usage. One of the biggest things with DLSS frame generation is, uh, you know, it increases the VRAM, VRAM utilization. So there are games where you know, the 40 series can get more performance by enabling DLSS frame generation, but because they hit that VRAM limit, you know, DLSS frame generation just falls apart. So reduced VRAM utilization with DLSS frame generation, that's a new thing. Then we've got DLSS ray reconstruction. Again, uh, this is with ray, ray tracing turned on. I'm, I'm the RTX 40 series, you know, the mid range GPUs are pretty weak at ray tracing in my opinion. So uh, yeah, not much interested. Again, DLSS, the typical DLSS super resolution that has improved in stability and higher detail in motion. That is critical. If DLSS is able to like be even better than it already is, it's going to increase the gap with, you know, XCSS and FSR even more. XCSS is significantly better than FSR and DLSS is still a bit better than, uh, you know, XCSS. So this is going to be uh, even like a bigger lead for NVIDIA and DLA is also improved. Okay. What's interesting and what's going to be exclusive to the 50 series uh, generation is going to be DLSS multi-frame generation. So here basically what's going to happen is it's basically going to generate more than one frame. So it's not going to be like just a single frame. I think what I know is it's going to be up to four frames. So one real frame and you're going to have uh, three artificially generated frames. So that's what uh, DLSS 4 is basically, you know, it's going to generate more than one artificial frame. How, it, how good is it going to be? Uh, we do not know. Uh, they will be explaining a little bit in this video over here, but that's the entire uh, DLSS 4 stack. Uh, 40 series is going to get almost everything except the multi-frame generation. So yeah, so here you can see, right? Uh, there's going to be one real frame generation and there's going to be a three generated frames. So that's what uh, DLSS 4 is going to be. Uh, the, the, the main uh, feature of DLSS 4 is going to be like, it's going to have more generated frames. Another cool thing that they showed is that you can actually go into your NVIDIA app, okay? And you can change the frame generation to three times or four times. That's cool. That's a driver level setting. That's pretty cool. And also DS is going to be supported at, on day zero on 75 games. So basically it's kind of like most games, I think I think that already has DLSS 3.5. It's going to be easy to upgrade to DLSS 4. That's what I get. This is what I'm interested in. So enhanced DLSS and DLA and ray reconstruction. So just check this, check a couple of examples over here. And here are some examples you can see it's a significantly better image. So like if DLSS 4 is really this good in the in actual examples, I can see like there's a massive difference in, you know, uh, you know, image reconstruction over here. Uh, you know, there is less ghosting. There is far more detail. Uh, you can see there is so much more stability in the image. Uh, if if NVIDIA is able to actually deliver this uh, in most games, ah, it's going to be game changer, honestly. And also they claim that you're able to like, uh, you know, enable all these features through the driver. So we are we able to enable uh, enhanced DLSS and stuff through the driver level? I don't know. Let's see when it comes out. 
और गैस दैट वॉज ऑल अबाउट द एनवीडी आर टी एक्स फिफ्टी सीरीज जनरेशन गुड प्राइसिंग लाइक नॉट गुड प्राइसिंग लाइक आई वुड से एक्सेप्टेबल प्राइसिंग ओके नॉट मच ऑफ प्राइस इंक्रीज डी एल एस एस फोर इज गोइंग टू बी द मेक और ब्रेक यू नो पॉइंट फॉर आर टी एक्स फिफ्टी सीरीज दे आर प्रोमिसिंग लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विल दे बी एबल टू डिलीवर दैट्स अप टू एन वीडियो एंड हाउ द पार्टनर्स एंड हाउ द गेम्स इम्प्लीमेंटेड लेट्स सी हाउ इट वर्क विल फ्रेम जनरेशन बी एबल टू रिड्यूस द वी रैम यूटिलाइजेशन लेट्स सी If if that's possible, then it's going to be even better because RTX 40 series is going to support the enhanced frame generation, which reduces VRAM. Like it doesn't use as much VRAM as the last generation. I mean, as the uh, RTX as the current frame generation. So the enhanced frame generation doesn't use as much VRAM. So that's pretty interesting. We don't know anything about the resolution performance improvements. We don't know anything about the ray tracing improvements. So yeah, let's see how that all turns out. Probably the reviews are going to come pretty soon. Uh, for laptops, that's what that's what I'm more interested in. Availability availability starts from March. So, yep. Uh, let's see if I'm going to if I get a hold of RTX 5070 Ti or 5070 laptop. It's going to be interesting. Uh, lots of exciting stuff for the year, guys. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.